let's continue to look at the Flexbox item related properties. The first one that we're going to look at here is going to be Align Self. The Align Self property is a sub property of the Flexbox layout module. It makes it possible to override the Align Item value for specific Flex items. It accepts the same five values as Align Items. So once again, we can use Flex Start, Flex End, Center, Baseline, and Stretch. Let's see how this looks in practice. Here's the page that we'll begin working from. You should already be familiar with this since it's very similar to what we've used in previous exercises. In regards to the CSS, I have a display of flex on all of the containers. And by default, all of the items are using the default align items property of stretch. I'm going to go ahead and change that for this example to align items flex start. If we save and refresh, you're going to see how all of the items now shrink to only accommodate the content that is within the items and they will all begin at the start of the cross axes. What we can do with align self is we can force certain items to work in a different way. So let me show you what this looks like. If we target the third item of the first container and set the align self property to stretch, you will see that the third item now takes on the stretch behavior. Remember, this is the default behavior, but because we're using align items flex start, we have overwritten that for the container. Now we're specifying a unique item within the container and telling it to use stretch. I'll go ahead and I'll specify the rest of the property values for our remaining containers. Now, in order to see the baseline value working, we're going to need to change the size of the font within the items. So what I'll do is I'll target both item three and four of container five. I'm going to use align self baseline in conjunction with font size. We'll set item three to have a font size of 1.2 rems and we'll set item five to have a font size of three rems. This will allow us to have different font sizes that we can utilize for this example. If I save my page and I refresh, you will see that the second container where we set the align self to flex start doesn't do anything. And that's because we're already using that behavior. However, when we move on to the third container, the third item moves to the bottom of the container. And that's because we're using align self flex end. The fourth container centers the third item because of align self center. And you can see in our fifth container, the items three and four are aligning at the same baseline, even though the text is a different size. They have now moved away from the default baseline of the other items. Align self allows you to tweak the placement of individual items within their containing element, despite any align item value that may be applied to the items. Now let's talk about the order property. The order property gives us the possibility of controlling the order of content. You can target individual items and change where they appear in the visual order by using the order property. The order property is designed to lay the items out in ordinal groups. What this means is that items are assigned an integer that represents their group. The items are then placed in that visual order according to the integer. The lowest values will appear first. If more than one item has the same integer value, then within that group, the items are laid out per source order. By default, items have a default value of zero. So therefore, any item with an integer value greater than zero will be displayed after any items that have not been given an explicit order value. You can also use negative values with the order property, which can be quite useful. If you want to make an item appear before something else, you will use a negative value. Let me show you what this looks like. On this page, I have some HTML that I've commented out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uncomment out this code. I'm using similar HTML that we've been working with throughout this section of the course. If we refresh our page, you will see that I have a new container that has five items. They are appearing in the source order. So one, two, three, four, and five. 
Let's go into the CSS. And I'm just going to make a comment here that specifies that these are our align self properties that we're using. Now we'll go ahead and specify that these are going to be the order properties. And what I'll do here is I'm going to target my sixth container and we'll start off by targeting item four. I'm going to change the order of item four and have it appear first. In order to do this, I will use the order property and I'm going to use negative one. If we save and refresh, you'll see that item four now appears first. The remaining items are just going to fill in where they possibly can. In this way, you can see that it is possible to change the order of items. Let's say I wanted item two to appear last. We can easily do that by targeting item two. And once again, if we use the order property, and this time if we just set the order property to anything higher than zero, so if I simply use one here and we refresh, you'll see how item two moves to the far right. Because all of the items by default have an order of zero, anything higher than zero will move it to the right. Now, if I apply the same order property on item five and we save the page and refresh, you can see how now, since both item two and item five have an order of one, item five, since it comes later in my HTML, will appear to the right of item two. Being able to adjust the alignment of individual items as well as the order of items can be really useful. Let me just show you one example that is a little bit more practical in application. Here's the HTML that I'm using for this example. I have an article, it contains a heading, a paragraph with a class of author, a regular paragraph, and a paragraph with a class of date. As you can see, these items are going to appear in sequential order. It is worth noting that I'm linking to the reset and the original style file that we've been using thus far. I'm also linking to a third style file called article.css. The article.css file just has some styles that are specific for this particular example. You can see the properties and values that I'm using to be able to achieve this. What we're gonna do is we are gonna reorganize the way the text displays within this article. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a display of flex on the article. Now, when we do this, the items are going to appear in one row. This is not what I want. I still want the items to appear in a column. So in order to make sure that that happens, we'll have to use our flex direction property and we'll have to set it to column. This will ensure that the items appear in one column. So this gets us back to the default. We do need to use display flex so that we can take advantage of align self and order. What I'd actually like to do is I would like to move the byline to the bottom of the article and I'd like to move the publication date to the upper right section of the article. So we can do that using our flex properties. I'm going to go into the paragraph with a class of date and what we'll do is we'll use align self and we're gonna tell this to align at the flex end. Because I'm using a flex direction of column, my axes have now been switched. The main axis is vertical and the cross axis is horizontal. So when we use a flex end, you'll see that it's going to move the date to the right hand side or to the end of the cross axis. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use my order negative one to move this item so that it appears first within the article. Finally, I'm going to take the author paragraph and we're gonna move that to the bottom. In order to do that, all I have to use is a number that's higher than zero. So I could use one, two, three, 10. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use two. And if we save and refresh, you'll see how the byline now appears at the bottom of the article. The reason that you might want to switch around the order of things has to do with accessibility. It might make more sense in an accessible standpoint to not have the date come first because this isn't really super important information. It would make more sense to have the article be first, then the byline, then the text, and then the date, which was the source order in which we created this article. Taking advantage of the flex properties and being able to reorganize the order and the placement of items is going to give us precise control about how we want our pages rendered out.